Okay, what I saw on the video, about to see if it works out. So I'm getting ready to put dog holes and also a T-track for a stop block that runs continuous along my bench. So what one guy did, I saw on YouTube for the dog holes, got a piece of pegboard because these holes are drilled, you know, perfectly on center. So you can make perfect squares if you drill holes following the pre-drilled holes. So I bought a piece of pegboard, figured out that I want to come two holes in from uh, it being flush with the edge of my bench. Um, but then skip three holes, which would give me four inch spacing. And then that'll be my next set of holes. And I might put another hole back here, just move the jig back after I drill all the first set of holes. And then I wanna make sure that my stop block and my T-track doesn't interfere with any of that. So I got these two pieces flushed up and then I just pretty much uh, play with, around with my laser. Still trying to fiddle with it a little bit. I think we got like five and a half here. And I think it's like five and a half heavy. So I need to pivot my laser back a little bit, but it lets me know that pretty much I can aim for that row in between my last two holes and still get my T-Track in there. And then the T-Track wouldn't have been about four inches off of this. So I'll probably make a wider stop block that pivots back um, three or four inches or something like that. Take a two by four and turn it sideways with a knob will probably be the style of stop block that I use so that way I can still catch stuff that's up against the back side of my fence. I got all the holes circled for where I want to drill. So the next step is just take my uh, center finding bit and pre-drill all those holes. After I drill all the holes, so now I know where the center is. Take my other drill, finish the hole all the way through. Yep, do that all the way down, and then I have to come back with a three quarter inch bit. I got all the holes on the surface pre-drilled, so now, you know, I don't have to worry about laying any of them out. I'm just coming back with a three-quarter inch bit. Let me come back and hit this with a chamfer bit. This is what allowed me to drop three-quarter inch bench dogs from either clamps or uh, fences or anything else inside of the, any type of accessories, pretty much, on top of the bench. And this is going to run down the full length of it with a T-track that runs down the middle for our stop block. I'm also going to add a T-track probably through here. For, uh, on both sides so I can make me a crown stop so I can do crown molding in the nested position and yeah the really nice part by using the pegboard it makes all these holes square with each other so I have to actually make a demonstration but this is going to be nice to have all these holes drilled Because actually one of the things I was slightly scared about when I actually put this edge banding on I ran four inch screws in here I did not know I should have marked it on top of this so I knew then I could have you know adjusted my layout for my bench dogs but this one right here there's a screw right on the right hand side of this hole hopefully that doesn't happen anywhere else throughout here but it looks like again the four inch screw only comes to this first dog hole so yeah, that screws that I ran through here and here, it looks like all it comes to this first dog hole. So worst case scenario, I could inch one back a little bit further, but I think it'll be good enough. Um, hopefully, we'll see if I hit you know any more screws as I go through drilling the rest of the bench. That's the first one. So maybe I got lucky and I just put, I put the screws in random places. I didn't even measure them. Probably should have measured them or it would have been a lot smarter. Then I would have known exactly where they all are. I also could have went with a shorter screw. But this has went down through the first layer and a half of plywood. So this will probably still take a, a stop dog or a clamp. But I just don't want to be hitting metal screws with this uh, three quarter inch bit. I have a lot of holes to drill and don't want to dole out the bit. 
Well, they're all drilled and they're square to each other as far as I can tell. I really built a table so I actually get some bench dogs. But this is essentially what the whole purpose of it is. There's various clamps and stuff that are made to go into dog holes. This is just one of my regular uh, quick clamps that I have, but the shaft on it is actually three quarters of an inch. So that actually fits through the dog holes as well. Let's typically we have a removable jaw. You can just take the jaw off, put it beneath the bench, but then you can clamp stuff anyway. And for like this instance, I have like a little mini vise. I'm gonna get a bigger vise, but I can clamp a vise up here. I can clamp my router table down at that end later on, cause that's just gonna be a piece of plywood. It gives me clamping and squaring options all along the bench. And then once I get my stop block running along here on the T-Track, I'll be able to set repetitive cuts from the miter saw to my stop block. Get repeatable cuts, clamp stuff off of the bench, you know, cause yeah, this is this is gonna be fun. My next step, though, now all the holes are drilled. They're all drilled, but now I need to take my router and put a chamfer around the top's edges of each one of these. Then I can clean up the truck for the day. Just like that. All the dog holes are drilled and chamfered. And the plywood is a uh, double layered, so I have an inch and a half of bearing for the dogs. So that should give me plenty of force as far as my clamps and everything else that I put in here. They all have the same layout. They're the same setback from the edge. They're all four inches apart from each other. And they're all square with each other. Which for my first time doing bench dogs, I am actually really happy with the pegboard. Freaking love YouTube. If it wasn't for that video, I definitely wouldn't have had the idea and I would have been actually laying out and squaring everything off for every single hole and that would have taken forever. And out of all the holes, I only hit one screw. And it was this one right here. Didn't go all the way through, but it still should be enough for me to get a dog in. We will see. I think that's through at least the first layer or two. Well, first layer. Because there's only two layers of three quarter inch plywood. And that's at least three quarters of an inch down. So I'll probably still use that one for a dog hole. The next step, once my T-Track comes, I just checked the website. It'll be here on the 14th. Is to run me a T-Track all the way down through the middle of here and lining up with my miter saw. Once I set up the T-Track, I'm going to do probably something something similar to, a, I think it's the Concord Carpenter over on YouTube. He pretty much just took a block of wood, put a knob on the top of it, and then ran that along the T-Track. So I have a stop block that I can slide up and down on the bench for the miter saw. It's probably going to be like a six inch block, so that way it still can catch the back edge of the fence because I'm cutting something real small. The stop block and the T-Track, which also then I can run a T-Track through here so I can do a crown stop for whenever I do crown molding and the stop block. But then this also allows me to do all kinds of accessories like clamping my router table. I can clamp, uh, you know, a vise. This is a really small one. Get me a bigger, I mean, get a larger vise. So yeah, this pretty much opens up the door for a lot of different options like clamping stuff directly to the top of the bench. Again, these aren't the right type of clamps, but there's a bunch of clamps that work out with dog holes and a lot of different stops and fences and squaring jigs. With all these being square, I can you know lay two dogs along the back, bump some up against it and sand or run my uh, biscuit joiner. Or in this scenario, the small vice, but once I get a larger one, I can pretty much clamp it onto my bench the same way I'm planning to do my router table down at the end. So my router table will just be a piece of plywood with my router essentially like that one mounted upright with a fence. So I can actually do edge profiles and larger profiles with my bigger router a little safer and a little easier than going by hand. But yeah, I can clamp stuff like this and I can also do edge planing or joints joinery on the edge. You got know, to break out a chisel or something like that. I can again clamp a vise or clamp any other jig onto the bench because I have holes pretty much put, laid out and spaced everywhere. And with them all being on the same layout, if it fits over here, 
they can also fit and clamp up over there. Um, Ron Park is the person that pretty much gave me all these ideas, and I am having fun adding stuff to this truck kind of day by day. I think they came out really good. back locked right now but I have the dog holes on my fold up extension as well definitely gonna be a worth it investment the time I spent to do this